Welcome to the April Vini Curiosity Wines Preview. Um, this is one of our wine club cases. For those of you who haven't got the phones to do what I'm talking about, Batten Bottle Wine Club sends out two cases um, every quarter and one case every six months. So two cases every quarter are uh, Conspirators, which is 12 bottles, four wines, three bottles of each, and Vini Curiosity, which is this case, which is six wines, one bottle of each, and two whites usually. This one's two whites as well. Um, and Piemonte, which is really a kind of love letter, Nebbiolo, if I'm truthful. And usually it's six wines, sometimes it's a few more. And there is a Piemonte case going out this month. So, all very exciting. So the Vini Curiosity case that we're doing this time is being delivered from the 18th of April. The live home tasting will be on the 20th of April. Um, you can either buy the small bottles, so the samples, bottle tasting, or you can just buy a case of the full cases. Join up the wine cup. There are cases left. We've got a few, which is fantastic. Um, just go to bat.wine, click on the wine club page. Everything will come up before you. Hopefully it'll make perfect sense. If it doesn't, just call Emma or I. We will help you out. Our mobile numbers, office numbers, the whole lot. They're all on our website. Nothing is hidden. Okay, so as for the wines, let's kick off. Brand new wine. Brand new wine. Now, they did come to the London Wine Tasting, so I released a little bit then. But we've really, I brought it for this case and this wine. Here's Ninin. Now, this is Malvasia Moscato. Now, Malvasia Moscato is a strange grape. It doesn't appear very often in Italy. It's sort of, maybe it was a Genovese. I'm trying to work out what the history is behind it. But it comes from the Pinarolesi. And the Pinarolesi is in Piemonte. And it is more specifically underneath Monviso, which is the mountain you see at the start of Panorama film. So it's on the French Alps side. It's a huge great thing that sits out when the, when the weather's good in Piemonte. You can see it from just about anywhere. It's, it's, it's magnificent. Um, and here, you're high altitude, you've got deep clays. Um, essentially, it's muscat, but it, it's kind of got slightly different characteristics to it. And this one they've done with skin's contact, but it's La Marie, and La Marie don't really like in precision. They, they, they like organic winemaking, they, they lean that way, but they don't really like it to be too natural. Nothing, nothing that really scares the horses. So this is about as extreme as they went and it, it kind of really works because that skinsiness just gives it more texture, more richness, but not so much that you're thinking, oh, what the hell happened there? I mean, there's Matt's one you see, which is about, oh, I think he does about 60 days on the skins. Very, very different approach with the, um, the, the orange, as he called it, the Italian orange. This is a much more restrained version, but it's in, it's kind of in the same, it's in the same ballpark. Really, really lovely wine there. Um, and we go from there, I also just love dry muscat, and, and it's really interesting to see where you're taking it. We've got another one in the Conspirators case, which is oh, so beautiful, Piuque Bello. Um, but this one also, I love this. And the, the, the baby version of it, or the, the unadulterated version is the Blonde Elisa which is just so clean, so fresh. It could be Alsatian, it's just divine wine. Um, anyway, then we flick over to the Collio. We do um, Roberto Picek, um, Yelka, named after his mum. This, this, is a, this is just a staggering wine. It's 2017 vintage, this time round. Um, and the Ribolla, it's Ribolla Gialla, Malvasia, Friulano. Um, and it's just, it's just become epic because he now gives it five years before he even releases it, which is just great. So it spends three years in concrete eggs. Part of the wine is aged in open fermenters, part of it's aged in concrete. Um, a whole lot's brought together for the assemblage. None of it in oak. Just, it's just given its head, given its hair. You've just got this incredibly vibrant, it's one of the great wines of the Collio now. Um, and high, highly, highly recommended. Divine wine. This one's not too strong either. It's just coming in at 13.5%. Um, but if you're wondering what the not not sort of radical, more extreme ends of Collio production, more the uh, still really hands off, still vibrant, still very exciting, um, but just a little bit more restrained. But 
just fantastic wines. Um, hope you really enjoy it. So that's the that's the Elka. Um, and then we go to the Carema. Now, I haven't got a bottle of it here. It's still in the bond. I'm picking it up later. But the Carema Cantina Togliana, it used to be called Achille Milanese. Um, he's just changed name from his name to the name of the Cantina. It's gradually, the Cantina's growing a little bit. He's had more of his, when <laughs> I say a little bit. Okay, Carema Reserva. He makes just under 400 bottles. So it's one barrel of this wine. And this is the 2018 vintage and it's off the scale. Now, Crema is a village that's just on the Aosta border. So just before you go up the Aosta Valley, last village in Piemonte before you go into the Aosta is Carema. And the next village is called Donas. And here they grow their Nebbiolo, which they call Picotendro, on terraced slopes at just the most crazy terraces which have stone pillars which they connect the terraces to this is insane beyond belief um and magnificent wines because uh, it's a bad thing to say but global warming's kind of been kind to to the carema region which is dominated by the by the cantina but there are more and more good producers coming in. Now they can get their pico tendro to full ripeness. You're getting this amazing silk coming through. So where wines like Barolo give you power and base, dum, 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 dum. this gives you more treble, it gives you more fineness. Just that delicious silky mid-palate. This is a kind of thing which, oh, it's a dangerous thing to say, but this is the Pinot Noir of Italy. This is just it's so much better than any Pinot Noir I've ever tasted from Italy. Just magnificent wines. Um, just something truly great. And the reason it's coming in at number three is because it is light, it's very fine. I don't want to disturb the rest of the wine tasting, actually. So this one just sits in there at number three. And then coming in at number four, Roccafiore. Now, Luke is coming out to the tasting in June. Again, if you're interested in the wine tasting we're doing in London in June, it's, it's <coughs> excuse me, the Tuscan producers and some of the Umbrians. And, and here we go. This is the... Rocca Fiore, so named after the estate. It's Sangiovese. Um, for me, this is the most important red wine they make. They make a Sagrantino, they make a Montefalco, but the Sagrantino is really made because it's very difficult to sell straight Sangiovese from Umbria. Um, nobody, it's, it's just not a wine that's held in high regard. Sagrantino, for some reason, is held in much higher regard. But this one has such style, such freshness. It's such a good example of what you can get. It's not as... The acidity is not as high as Chianti, so it's not quite so floral and and quite so uh, almost spiky as you can get with some Chiantis, not including the ones we do, actually. But And it's not as rich as a Brunello, but it just has that remarkable balance, beautiful purity of fruit. Delicious wine. Really, really good wine. So, looking forward to tasting that. It's quite a nice case. So we're going from doing the big ones, we're going Nebbiolo, then we're doing Sangiovese, then we're doing another Sangiovese, Carmignano, which is, oh, it's probably my least favourite DOC. It's Italy's oldest DOC. So this was created before, 100 years before the French appellation system even existed. And it's within the Barco Real, which was the old hunting wall that was set up to keep the common people out um, by, by the Medici. So this estate's right in the centre. It's biodynamically farmed. Rosella just is straight out purest Sangiovese producer. And it shows so absolutely in this wine. So yes, it's got Cabernet in it. You do really well spot it. You know, it's it's this is a great Sangiovese. Um, again, we're looking at 2018 vintage, so we're tasting two 18s from, from Sangiovese, from Tuscany. Very, very different style. One biodynamic, the other, but again, not, not, not um, certified biodynamic, not certified organic. Um, it's a very, very small producer that can't, can't see. There's no reason for them to waste their money on certifications. Rocca Fiore decertified de themselves. They were certified organic, but they actually decided... The organic rules didn't really suit them and the environment, so they, for personal reasons, did it. So two really interesting Sangiovese. It's going to be a great taste. It's a lovely case. It, it, does it get better? Of course it gets well. It doesn't get better. It just finishes on a different note. So um, 
we've done the two two Sangioveses, one Nebbiolo, one Malvasia Moscato, one blend of Rebolla Gialla, Moscato, Malvasia Restriana, and Friulano. Then we go here to Irenio. Um, this is from Giordano at, um, uh, well, it's down from Baone. His main estate, or the central estate, is La Montecchia, which is the northern half of the Collier Organe, about 12 miles from Venice. Here, though, you go down to the bottom of the Collier Organe. Collier Organe just sits as an outcrop of volcanic hills that's just been pushed out of the Padovan Plain. Um, and on the southern part, you get more ripeness, you get more richness. And this is, is the Cabernet Sauvignon here works so well. And this is straight Cabernet Sauvignon. These are really old clones. These are the sort of clones, these were brought over by old Venetian traders who, who, who'd recognised early on that Cabernet was one of the, this hundreds of years ago, Cabernet was one of the great wines um, or the great grapes of, of Europe. And naturally, because they were Venetians, they had a choice of everything, they're great traders. Those are the ones they chose. And Giordano farms in a very pragmatic way. So sustainable agriculture. His winemaker, Andrea Boratti, is genius. Um, and he likes lighter, fresher style wine. So actually, this isn't that light, it's 14. But sadly, that's just the nature of the world nowadays. Um, so all really fascinating wines. This is a great tasting box. By the way, I really hope you enjoyed the last one. I thought, I thought it was one of the best we've sent out. This one as well, though. I'm so excited by it. It's a great case. If you have any questions at all and would like to join the wine club, um, if you'd just like to buy some wine, do give us a shout. Send us an email. Everything is on the website, bat.wine. Um, and all of our information is there. Nothing is hidden. So, yeah, look forward to seeing you. Even if you are not receiving the wines if you just want to find out what it's all about i can send you a login to the live home tasting on the 20th of april it is by invitation it is really for the wine club but if you're interested yeah come along come and see what you think um anyway i hope you really enjoyed this case it's a classic i hate the word classic but it's a really good case okay bye <laughs>